Oh. All right, guys, back in the Elan Valley in mid Wales. As you know, this is one of my favorite places in Wales to shoot, especially astrophotography. And tonight it is the night of the Leonid's Meteor Shower Peak. Not only that, but there's two nights of clear skies forecast in Wales. Like, what? <laughs> like, what? Wales never has clear skies forecast for any astronomical event. And to get two nights forecasted, I'm a little bit suspicious, not gonna lie. Um, so I think I'm gonna take a hike up, um, up onto the hillside, and I'm gonna get a nice time lapse of the moon setting. And then as it gets dark, I'm gonna leave that time lapse going and hopefully get some meteors. At the same time, I'm going to try and get a nice shot of Orion. Uh, my A7S II um, has been astro modified, and so I should be able to pick up more detail and colour in hydrogen alpha emission nebula, like Barnard's Loop, particularly in Orion. But yeah, back in Wales, got the van out. I'm in one of my favourite places. It's a bit of a classic vlog, isn't it? It's been a while. Um, a lot of the vlogs have been travelling in La Palma and Turkey, but it's good to be back in Wales and finally got some good clear skies forecast. We've got the Leonids. I'm really, really excited if you couldn't tell already. <laughs> so I'm going to finish my coffee, play the intro, and then we're going to get a hike in. that I planned on shooting. Sadly, it's just not working out. The view that I wanted down the back. Allow me to save your eardrums because as you can tell, the audio was absolutely ruined by the wind. But I was basically just explaining that it wasn't quite working out. The, the wind was insane and both of the viewpoints I was after just weren't working. There was a lot of cloud and mist going on. Um, so I decided I had to get back down, jump in the van and uh, go for plan B. Good morning. <laughs> um, yeah, you're probably wondering why it's morning. And after I hiked back down from the the failed spot, I basically drove around the valley for a, about half an hour just to kind of get an idea of how the weather was working. But the, anywhere inside the valley it was just not possible. There was just clouds forming above the, the reservoirs, the, the wind was really driving all the moisture around and causing clouds. Um, so I had to go up to the top dam, the very northernmost dam, which is a bit more open and out of the sort of valleys. Uh, it was quite busy there. And I didn't do much vlogging, I didn't do any vlogging because I had both cameras like working hard, doing time lapses and taking photos. And yeah, a lot of those time lapses got ruined um, some by lights of cars and other people with bright torches, some through my fault. I've got this new slider, I've been trying out the Rhino ROV Traveller Pro. Um, and it's got a really bright blue light on it, so I've got one time lapse which has just got that bright blue light in the foreground. But yeah, I haven't really checked the images, I think I've got a few meteors. But yeah, we literally went until sunrise. It was me and Matt Price who was left, who was featured on Witten's before. Uh, so it was cool to hook up with him. And we ended the night up on the hills watching Venus rise just next to Spicker. And oh my god, Venus is so bright right now. It was amazing. It was such a beautiful sight. And it was a really nice way to end the night. So I'm going to finish my coffee. Probably make a bacon sandwich and then uh, let's get planning. Okay guys, back in the van. <laughs> really sorry, this vlog is just kind of turning into me in the van. <laughs> um, 
But I went and got some internet today, picked up some supplies, had some food. Um, and now I'm getting ready for another night under the stars. And I thought it'd be a good opportunity for me to share with you guys my thought process into planning a night like this. So when it comes to planning, there's a lot of pre-planning, stuff you do months, maybe years in advance. And one of the biggest helpful things that I have found for that is Google My Maps. Um, this application where you can stick pins on a map, you can add notes and images, um, and you can have as many maps as you want. To. So I'm in mid-Wales at the moment in the Elam Valley, so if I zoom in, um, I've got sort of pre-planned compositions that I've been waiting for. You know, maybe it's a good spot facing north for the Aurora. Um, you know, and I've got, uh, so this one here, Penagaric, south, southeast. I always kind of know to which direction it's facing. A, so I know which way to point my camera um, from the plans that I've made. And B, because it means that I can plan what's going to be in the night sky. So with this one, for example, it's south, southeast. So I know that um, towards the middle or the end of Milky Way season, I can go there and get that composition with the Milky Way. Um, I know the moon will cross those skies and the planets will cross those skies, or maybe now, tonight, I'll be able to get Orion there because Orion will move into the south southeast. Um, so I've got all these compositions sort of pre-planned. This kind of just helps me decide where to go and what to do. Um, when it comes to like the actual night, like now, the first thing to do is check the weather. So I went into town earlier, got some internet, checked the weather. And I used the Met Office and Clear Outside. Both of them said it's going to be about clear till about 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Um, I prefer Clear Outside because it gives you the cloud in low, mid and high. Um, all of those in, in, in 100%, 0 to 100. And that kind of gives you a much better idea of what's going on with the weather and in the skies in terms of clouds compared to the Met Office who use a single icon, whether it's completely cloudy or partly cloudy with a little bit of a, a moon there or if it's just a moon denoting very clear skies um, the thing with the Met Office's icon system is that it doesn't paint much of a picture they might say it's clear skies but then you look at clear outside and it says most of the skies are clear except for a lot of high cloud because that high cloud is thin the Met Office decide that it's more clear than partly clear uh, so I find clear outside gives a better picture of what's going to happen in terms of clouds and it, it just seems to be far more reliable and accurate compared to the Met Office. The Met Office are very conservative about uh, their forecasts. So once you have checked the weather, the next thing you have to do is check the moon. The moon is the queen of the night sky and she decides what you do and when you do it. So tonight there is a waxing gibbous moon uh, and it's in the skies until about 2.30 a.m. So there's no point in me going to try and get some Milky Way detail whilst that waxing gibbous moon is in the sky or any sort of detail and colour out of the Orion complex. Um, when the moon is out, you'll be restricted to moonscapes, so landscape images that are either lit by the moonlight or feature the moon itself. And you can also do time lapses, which is pretty good because you can see the changing of the shadows as the moon changes its position in the sky. You can time lapse the moon setting or rising. And you can also do moonlit star trails. You won't get as many stars as you would, but it still looks kind of cool. And I had so much fun playing with 135mm Samyang last night. I think I'm going to try some sort of telephoto star trails later on tonight. And I've picked out a nice little spot. It's this one here, um, facing north, looking at the dam. It's nice and long distance, so um, it will lend itself really nicely to the, the long focal length, fingers crossed. But yeah, there's a lot of apps which can help you with your planning. I'll be making a video very soon. I've scripted it, I've written it out about all the best apps um, for astrophotography. So make sure to hit subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that video. But I'm going to take you guys outside. Let's get out of the van, save this vlog. Let's get into the field and uh, back to the classic vlogs. Ready?
drove over that bridge four times for that sequence. I hope you guys realise how much petrol money I waste on these bloody vlogs. <laughs> Okay, so I'm in pretty much the position I wanted to be in. The hike was a lot longer and steeper than I remember it being. But um, the, the dam is really far away and even at 135 mil, it's coming out so small in the frame. There's a nice lead in line with the roads, a few sheep in the foreground. There's a really annoying house in the distance with their lights on, but it, it's just such a small, feature within the foreground it doesn't stand out i really wanted the dam and the the overflowing dam to be quite prominent so i think maybe a wide angle star trail somewhere would be a better idea or maybe just go and do some time lapses uh, i'm gonna check my map see what i can come up with and then set something up because i need to eat i'm really hungry right now so i can leave a time lapse going and eat but um i'm gonna head back down Alright, so I'm just setting up my star trails. Oh, there's an echo here. Can you hear that? Echo! Woo! <laughs> anyway, um, just setting up my star trails. Nice, simple composition. No hiking involved. I've gone for the wide angle. Using the 16-35 G Master Sony lens. Shooting at f3.5 for a bit of extra sharpness compared to 2.8. Let's get cracking with that. I might as well show you the star trails. Let me know what you think. So, as you can see, the moon, well, hopefully you can see behind me, the moon is setting. It's about 2.30 a.m. And pretty much exactly as clear outside and the Met Office predicted. It's clouded over quite heavily. Uh, I tried to drive around and see if I could get away from it, but the entire sky is just foaming with cloud. So, I'm not going to get one more, I'm not going to get one more roll of the dice. That's the end of the Leonid's Meteor Shower for me for this year. Uh, definitely got a few yesterday, so I'll show you that image in a bit. But um, I'm really sorry if this vlog has just been completely disjointed <laughs> and full of failure, but unfortunately that's how it goes sometimes. And it's kind of what I love about these vlogs is that you can show the real behind the scenes and not just the finished product. So hope it's been enjoyable hope you've maybe learned something i don't know but um yeah anyway i'm gonna sign out if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon i wish you good luck and clear skies